Hello and welcome to part 24 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Sippy Cup, and well, so the fortress that I was running before is no more, and um, yeah, I, I just went ahead and abandoned that one. Maybe someday I will go in adventurer mode and try to <laughs> reclaim the fortress. The puppy strangler was slain, so... I know I won't have to deal with him, but maybe there will be some goblins lurking around. Maybe I can find find those goblins that were trapped in the cages or something. I don't know. I'm still a little bit out of shape about that. So what do we have going on here? I promised you guys that I would do one about advanced irrigation techniques. Well, uh, this is that episode. So I'm mostly going to go over uh, river-fed irrigation system. I've already got it set up. Um, that's kind of the boring part, but I will detail how I did it, and hopefully you'll get to see it in action, and uh, I won't make a fool of myself by doing something ridiculous. So, um, what did I do? And this is not, this, this fort I'm not really making a, a real fort out of, I mean I might eventually, but right now it's just, uh, it exists only for demonstrating this one thing. Um, if I dig down and find some interesting things, maybe I'll stick with it, but if not, I don't know, I might just make a new one. So, what I did was, you see that in in this embark I've got a river here. So, what if I wanted to make something that would automatically uh, drop water on a farm plot using dwarfy technology? Well, I suppose what I would do, and this is basically ripped straight from the magma wiki. I think it's like df.magmawiki.com if you search for irrigation. One of the little diagrams is something exactly like this. And I've actually I've used it before myself and it's pretty cool. So I thought I would show you guys how to do it. So let's go down a level and I'll show you what's set up here. So let me actually remove these things here. Well okay. So basically what I did is I dug a tunnel right up against this river. I haven't removed this last tile yet. I have two levers, one here and one here. A door to keep water from getting in here. Doors are basically watertight. Um, the only thing you might want to do just to, uh, as an added measure of security, is to uh, press Q and come over to the door and then you can do this. You can set it to forbid passage, so now your dwarves will no longer walk through this door. So if for some reason I send somebody down to pull this lever and another dwarf ran out this door ahead of him, well that, you know, that dwarf would be in bad shape. Well, actually this is going to be full of water anyway, so I don't think it's a problem, but anyway. So, you know, you can set his internal... I don't know what these other two things do, to be perfectly honest. I, this one, oh yeah, this makes it pet passable or not, so you can decide whether you want a little kitten door. So if, you know, kitten stranglers are running around, they have a quick and easy means of escape. Not really. Alright, so um, what's going on up here? Actually, the idea is for the water, when I channel out this tile, the water is going to come up here and stop. I'm going to pull this lever, and actually, I don't need to show you. Uh, I've, got, I've got notes set so that I remember which one does what. So the same note that you use to set a station that I showed you guys earlier in the military part, which is just Shift N, um, you can come over here and you can see what I've got set up. I've, I've just put notes on the levers so I don't forget what does what. So this lever is for the floodgates, and this lever is for the hatches, and we'll get to that in a sec. Anyway, so the water is going to flow up here. It's going to stop at these floodgates. I'm going to pull the lever for the floodgates. It's going to open and fill up this room. Then. I'm going to pull that lever again. It's going to shut the floodgates. So there's this. These rooms are going to have exactly ten units, or sorry, ten tiles of water at seven depths. So exactly seventy units of water. Then I'm going to pull this lever, which is going to open both of these hatches, which is going to dump the water into these two rooms, which should be the same size, I think, unless I did something crazy. Yeah, that should should be good. Anyway, and then once these are nice and moist, just like I like my cupcakes, we're going to plant some stuff in them. 
and they're not really attached to my fort right now again like I said I just kinda set this up to show you how you would go about doing this so um, what is this these little what are these little things here these are constructions that I started building um, and then set them to suspended specifically it was a wall why did I do this the reason that I did this is because your dwarves love to build themselves into places where they can't get out I know that if I didn't do this the dwarf would come in here he would stand here looking at this and he'd go hmm let's see where should I stand should I stand in here or should I stand right here here here, here. I'll stand in here and then he'd be trapped in there until I got somebody to pull the lever and let him out but his dumb ass would probably stand in here anyway even when this floodgates open so to save you yourself the headache what you can do is you can start constructing something where they would normally have to stand so I, I knew that to build this floodgate he could only stand in one of two places here where I want him to stand or here where I don't want him to stand so I built a wall here and then suspended construction they won't stand somewhere when they're building something where there's suspended construction so now um, since this thing was never actually started I should just be able to remove building uh, with X like so and careful not to accidentally slate your things here for removal so now in theory uh, this system should work so let's see and if I fail miserably you guys will be the first to see hooray super fun okay so I think all I need to do is first of all get some water to charge up our system so let's get a miner to channel out the tile that's going to start feeding the system so we'll figure out which one that is that should be this tile here so let's have a miner come and channel that okay and we'll resume and we'll go down a level and hopefully something oh whenever I try to demonstrate something the seasons always change times they are changing alright well, we'll wait, wait for the autumn to come and uh, yeah so let's see dude okay oh my commander um, I, if I've made him a set of iron armor and he's been slaying unicorns which is pretty cool there's like unicorn corpses all over somewhere let's see if I can find a good yeah there's one just so you believe me unicorn partial skeleton and look here and see I can find some good combat the unicorn is fighting militia captain has been chopping up unicorns to train his axe skill what better way to train your axe skill than to chop up unicorns okay so it looks like um, it's about time for a minor guy to come over here oh there goes the water okay cool so alright so now the water has filled the system yay good stuff now I don't know maybe it might not be a terrible idea to put something over this little hole but whatever these guys are sleeping in the river god these guys I swear okay so I'm gonna send somebody down to open the floodgates which should be this guy here so uh, if I set a task to pull the lever Wait a minute. Did somebody never come down here and finish? Oh, sigh. Well, let's see what happens. It looks like this task maybe never completed, so maybe only one side will work. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty smart. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Oops. Somebody should come pull this. Yeah, it looks like only one side completed. Okay, but anyway. So somehow this one didn't finish linking. I don't know why, but. Uh, I thought I had them both linked to here. Anyway, you can make it so that both of these will be linked to one, and maybe yours will work better than mine because I'm retarded. So now I have to pull the other lever, and it should. Uh, oh wait, sorry. First things first. I have to close this so I don't just flood my entire fortress. That would be pretty fun. All right, let's pull that again. So you will come down here, pull this lever. So now I'm not going to get like this entire river of water to dump into the downstairs area that I'm trying to be a farm. Now I can pull this other lever and we'll 
I should see water bloosh pour into the room. Yay. And that is how that works. So now you've got muddy tiles on the floor. So it's it's just a way to kind of control the flow of water from a river. And you know, you can expand a system like this, you know, if you wanted to say keep keep building, you know, digging up this way and have additional, you know, little drop points with the hatches. You could do that. So you could um, you know, just kind of expand and uh, have it drop in different places. So that's kind of the basic way that that system works and I feel dumb for not getting this one linked up. I don't know how that happened but oh well. You get the basic idea, right? Right. So anyway, and then you know, make sure to pull this lever again so that the hatch, the floor hatch closes that I built here. And uh, yeah, there. So I, you can see I linked both of these to one trigger. They both closed when I pulled the the lever. So yay, that's fun, right? Cool. Uh, I think that's all I have to show you. Let me pause for a second, see if there's anything else exciting going. Oh yeah, I've been doing been doing a little more research on kind of the most optimal um, set of skills and items to embark with and I think I've got a much better setup. Um, it's a, somewhat contingent on finding smeltable ores quickly but I mean I literally only started playing like I don't know I mean this took less than an hour to set up and get you know all of these workshops and stuff here but I've already got my militia commander a complete set of um, iron armor and iron weapon and iron shield because um, when I started I immediately built a, a wood furnace, uh, a smelter, and this metalsmith's uh, forge over here and then started digging my oh sorry yawning started digging my fortress entrance here and then came down here and then I was lucky like you know in the first level down practically there was uh, all these iron ores here and then you know further down there's even some more and all kinds of gypsum and stuff that I can make plaster out of but so this is actually kind of an interesting embark I think um, this this farm is not an ideal location here so this might just you know be a scrap thing because it's uh, not currently attached to my fortress and there is a down stairway I guess I could always you know deconstruct this and link the rest of this up to my fortress. Anyway, I'll figure that out, but so let's see what else was going on. Yeah, well anyway, you know, I I made I got the metal industry going first thing. That's usually something that I work on later in the game um, after I have a lot of masonry and carpentry and stuff going on. But actually it makes sense, you know. I I waited too long to try to start getting my metal industry going in my previous game and it cost me dearly. You know, the goblins had full iron armor and I had a couple of guys with steel armor and steel weapons, but for whatever reason some some of them were running around with like cloth and leather armor and they just got completely carved up as you probably saw. So, you know, it's worth uh, experimenting around with. My my militia commander has been just dicing the hell out of you know, unicorns and unicorns have me in touched him. I haven't even so much as grazed him with their majestic horns. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I think that's actually really it for now, and um, yeah, I, mean, I think I might end up making this the side of my new fort. I've been kind of monkeying around, so I'm going to stop goofing off and see if I can make this into something usable. And uh, what I really want to do is find some magma, so I can show you the magma smelting, uh, or sorry, magma smelters and magma forges, and how you use uh, pumps to bring magma up. Uh, and assuming I'm still kind of trying to figure out myself, so you can look forward to uh, more exciting failures like only half of my irrigation system working. I predict much flooding the fortress with lava and everything dying. But one way or another, it'll be exciting for you guys to watch. Hooray! Alright, so until next time, CB Cup signing out. Have a good night.